Bring in uh, Roger Altman, founder and senior chairman of Evercore. We don't need to go into what we we're, were just talking about, but th I thank you for this whole relationship. You knew uh, you, you were a Swifty long ago, before any of us were, right? 15 years, 20 years ago you were a Swifty. Uh, I'm a huge fan. Yeah. I love her. She's amazing. She is. Um, interest rates, the Fed, wars. Um, is this a time to be some, some of the, the best money manager we, managers we know have said, this is just really difficult right now? Well, step way, way back for a minute. Uh, imagine the four of us on the set had left the planet for two years, had no connectivity, and just returned. And we look at the structure of open market interest rates, medium and longer term interest rates. It might not be the first thing I looked at. Well, maybe. <laughs> you, look, you look at the path the of monetary policy. Yeah. You look at the fiscal trajectory of the United States. Thanks. And you look at geopolitical risk right now. Right. And you say to yourself, are these four factors conducive for investing, for equity investing? And the answer is no. When was Biden elected? Well, Biden took office at the beginning of 2021. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's exactly two years ago. You're not making a good case for your side. <laughs> well, it's three years ago. <laughs> but, but if you go through each of those factors, like, you know, there's been a sea change, quoting Howard Marks, in the structure of interest rates. And I think we're going to look back at the last 15 years, beginning with 2008, as an anomaly, and that what's going on now is essentially a reversion to normalcy. Mm -hmm. But it's tremendously uh, 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 important because internal rates of return are going to be declining, whether that's corporate or sponsor rates. Um, the incentives for investing at the margin are pro-fixed income. And it's, it's, just a, it's just a huge change. And then three, four months ago, six months ago, we would have been talking about the prospect for cuts of the federal funds rate. The market thought there'd be cuts, uh, multiple cuts, actually, starting around now. And of course, that's gone. Uh, you look at this absolutely stunning third quarter growth figure, 4.9%. That's mind-blowing, I think. Right. And, and obviously the Fed is going to be higher for much longer. I don't think that this coming week we're going to see an increase, but I think it's going to be steady as she goes for a long time. And you then, know, but something you just said was interesting, though, and that was that something, now... Just, just one thing? Yeah, no, no, no. There are a lot of things that one, were interesting. But... but <laughs> When you talk about the current interest rate environment, that suddenly it, it favors fixed income. We did fine in equity investments for 20 years with rates where they are or even higher, and equities were definitely more attractive and you had better returns. So something must have changed for you to now say that some 5% is suddenly really, really competitive for long term uh, no. versus equity. Well, it's just at the margin. But, I mean, it, it, it impacts asset allocation. Didn't we used to do pretty well? At, we would have given anything for 5% well, during the 80s and 90s. I know, but we're in a different environment now. Well, how? What changed? Well, just look at where we were a year and a half ago. No, I know. So, so it's, the rate, it's the change, not the absolute level. Well, I, I believe it's affecting asset allocations as between because equities of the, and Because of the change, and it's, it's kind of disruptive, and, and not the absolute level. Yeah, and, well, but then when you juxtapose it against these other negative factors, there's an incentive, and I think uh, okay, I'm hearing versus, it, I'm seeing it, the, the, to, to park a, some additional okay. money on the fixed income side. So there's additional risks which cause people perhaps to, to like the, the safety of fixed income more than we didn't have to worry I about mean, these things and in the 80s and 90s. And I mean, you're that. right in the sense that if the other factors I mentioned, plus some others, were more we're, favorable, perhaps we'd be steaming equity. right through this. Well, so how, much, how, how much also, yeah. Yeah. though, just what what corporations have set up. I mean, they've gotten used to zero interest rates, too. So some of these structures that they have aren't going to make sense, and you've got to let that wash out. Well, returns are going to be are, are in the process of or return expectations of declining. Just think about financial sponsors. Uh, uh, I saw the other day that 45 percent of overall transactions met in some measure of the past year were financial sponsors. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the current structure of interest rates does not allow the amount of leverage that they were using a year ago and two years ago. Therefore, so the returns are going down. to be lower yeah. and so forth. Uh, and the incentives for, for folks to put money there, with them, I mean, at the margin, are diminished a little bit, although private equity has been very successful. Uh, and, but I think also if you add in the geopolitical risk, wow. I mean, you know, two active wars, minute-by-minute minute risk of a wider war in the Middle East, any minute 
right? It could be. Uh, deceleration in China. A lot of people think the relentless upward march of Chinese growth is over. I happen to think that. And you add all that all up, it's a pretty negative picture. I mean, yeah, you got just Iran is this huge elephant in the room near term, and then it could be swallowed up by the Chinese elephant long term. So we got both of those. Well, it's not exactly a good thing when you read, wake up and read that the Russian deputy foreign minister is meeting with the Hamas leadership, right. which is what we read this and morning. And not only is, is it Iran and then China, but Iran and China are, are in cahoots now. It's like this hideous uh, threesome with Russia. Well, it's, <laughs> that's why we're hearing the term axis of evil again. Yeah, we are. And it's, I don't have, do you, do you dispute that term? No, I don't. Three? No, I don't. I don't. They, I mean, they've reminded us there is evil in the world. We probably need to spend some money to defend off future evil for, for the country. I mean, one of the things I think has been very disappointing is that since the onset of the Ukraine conflict, so much of the world has not come to the defense of Ukraine. We all think about the United States and the European yeah. allies, but so much of the world has either been neutral, like India, or actively opposed, like China. It's very discouraging. Well, Putin is the, the, the fear of Putin has almost taken a back seat to the fear of, of Iran and China. Well, right now. China. Yes, right this minute. But they're all helping each other, too. So, axis of evil. Roger, uh, great. Thanks. There's always Taylor Swift. And there's always Friday. <laughs>